I've always liked the philosophy that we haven't inherited this planet from our parents. We're only borrowing it from future generations. So we wanted to make sure that our impact was sustainable for our future and our kids' future as well. We watched a film called Trashed that shows how people deal with trash all over the world or how it's not dealt with and that there is no great option for waste other than not having it. After that film, we decided that we needed to change the way we were living and the way that we were doing things. So it's been almost five years now. It took us two years to open the store and now the store has been open almost three years. So yeah, yeah. it's been quite a journey. Zero Waste Living is really about trying to achieve the goal of reducing your waste almost completely. In our society, it's really hard to actually get to that final goal. So it's all about making choices that eventually allow you to eliminate as much waste and as much recycling from your life. It's part of sustainable living. Um, so there are other areas, you know, like trying to use less fossil fuels, but zero waste is just trying to reduce your own personal waste as much as you can with the resources that you have. Yeah, it's gonna be different for everybody. It's just the end goal and it's always a journey. We're all consumers. There's no way of not being a consumer in this life that we're living. So there's always going to be an element that you can improve on. We dove in fairly deep and tried to do as much as we could and then we realized that it was way too overwhelming and we had to start with the basics. Um, so one of the things that we bought first was the bamboo toothbrushes yeah. um, and we found good toothpaste that was zero waste as well. We actually bought a sewing machine from 1929 that is all wood and metal and taught ourselves how to sew. That's how we started making our own bags. We bought stainless steel containers to go and get deli items um, or fresh meat from the butcher. We used to put our garbage can out every two weeks or so, just like everybody else, and it would be pretty much completely full. Now, we put it out about once a month, and it's only about half full. It's been a considerable reduction of our waste, so I would say probably about 75 to 80% of our waste has been completely eliminated. The three main areas is usually in the laundry room, the kitchen, and the bathroom and it is difficult if you have things like pets or if you have kids. When we can, we make a whole bunch of snacks for the kids, but they have those specific snacks that they won't like the alternatives, right? So we do have to make compromises here and there. And we found, especially with having kids, if you can give them experiences over things, those are the things that they'll remember as adolescents or adults over just incremental moments of joy from a material item. Um, and we've seen that firsthand with, with our kids and it's been awesome. We do have pets and most of the pet food comes in non-recyclable plastic bags. So those are things that you can't really get rid of. Um, and we know that we're not perfect, but we're always striving to find those alternatives that will get us one step closer. It was really difficult in Victoria because we had to go to like seven or eight different stores to achieve a zero waste sort of lifestyle. So we created a website of all the places we were successfully shopping zero waste. And then we decided to start going to farmer's markets with some of our products. And that was really successful. And so one thing led to another and we opened our brick and mortar store. We opened a store called Zero Waste Emporium. And we wanted the name Emporium because it just kind of exemplified that old lifestyle. Because zero waste living is not a new thing. It's something that our grandparents and great grandparents used to do, right? They used to live this way, reusing everything that they had, repurposing things as much as possible. And single use plastics have only been in wide production since World War II. So that's a staggering amount of, of waste that we've managed to produce in such a short amount of time. So yeah, going back to the way things used to be in terms of its simplicity is, yeah, not a new idea. We're trying to be as close to a regular grocery store as we can be, just without all the packaging. So we encourage people to bring their own containers, whatever they already have at home. But if you come into the store completely unprepared, we have a take a jar, leave a jar option, and we get people to bring in their recycling. We can take it, clean it, and sanitize it in-house, and it's ready to use. And we also have paper bags, so that way, Nobody has to feel pressured to always have all your containers ready. 
So we have all the basic items that you would need to kind of get started with a zero waste lifestyle and then all the other stuff that you would get on your weekly grocery shop just without the packaging. All the kitchen staples, a lot of personal care products, basic kitchen utensils and brushes and stuff like that. All the proteins, both vegan and meat. Um, we have things like ice cream. We have a lot of treats. Some of the unique things that we have are milk on tap. Um, you can get all your yogurt and condiments on tap as well, unpackaged tofu. We have local meat um, and things that we can't bring in zero waste, we'll make ourselves in store. Um, so we make pasta sauce, we make two vegan cheeses, we make all of the butter. One thing that was really important to us is that we were um, super inclusive. Regardless of your lifestyle or your dietary needs, we wanted to make sure that everybody that wanted to participate in zero waste had that opportunity. So zero waste tends to have a stigma that it's going to be more expensive than just regular grocery shopping. We wanted to make sure that zero waste was not just for the privileged. We don't want it to be just a trend. We want to make sure that as many people can have it as a resource. It doesn't have to be perfect. You don't have it to be perfect in all areas of zero waste. So everything that we bring into the store um, we price check with the three larger grocery stores in town and we always match their prices or quite typically market a little lower uh, to make sure that um, anybody could come in and not have to pay any more just because it's zero waste. And one other thing is that you can go out and buy all your bamboo utensils and your stainless steel containers and all of that or you can just use what you already have at home. What we try to do to source uh, products in general is we try to focus on local producers, um, especially because they are really keen to work with us on a circular economy. So we've created these programs where we will provide containers or the supplier will provide containers that can be reused. So we'll clean them, sanitize them, send them back to uh, the supplier and then they can refill them. So that eliminates waste all the way from the producer to the consumer. And that shipping of that container back to the manufacturer is cheaper than them having to buy a brand new container, which of course takes either new material or uh, recycling, which can be quite uh, labor intensive and costly as well. Right now, we don't count every container that uh, passes through our store, um, but we know that on average, each customer will bring about five to 10 containers to refill. And if we start kind of multiplying that, uh, we are reducing about 125,000 to 150,000 containers from going into the landfill every year. And now that we have our suppliers as well participating in circular economies, that has added an extra element of containers that are not going to the landfill and new material that is not being produced for packaging. Even though it's important for consumers to make a, a good decision, it's even more important for uh, distributors and local stores like us to make those responsible decisions so that people have that option in the first place. It shouldn't be just left up to the consumer. Um, it's everyone's responsibility. We live on a finite planet with finite resources. And as much as we can try to recover waste and turn it into new materials, every time you recycle something, you're not actually recycling it, you're downcycling it. And so um, a plastic bottle can only be recycled a couple of times before it has to go to the landfill. So the more that we can all as a community reduce our waste, the better planet we'll leave behind for the next generations.